Welcome to King Circle, our community group time. We're glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we got a great night. And look who's back. Hey, hey, He's hey, back. Hey. Pastor Bill is back. I backslid one week. Yeah, I'm one back. week, Come but on. you, we, we repented. We yes. laid hands on him, cast the devil out of him, and here he is. He's back. Doesn't he look great? So uh, we're glad, <laughs> glad to have you back, Thank Bill. You. Thank you. So good. And we're glad to have you back. And as we've been trying to do without sounding too commercially, but, uh, but we've been trying to encourage people to like and share the program, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe we want to say this later, but... Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's we've just been seeing cool results on it. Oh yeah! In fact, on Sundays when I'm online pastor, I'll share it, and I, I immediately see th usually three or four or five people that I know from the past, right. maybe different, uh, even out, out of state, that are tuning in. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, uh, one of our guys shared Wednesday night. We had a brand new person join us, and just she shared how much it meant to her that. She thanked the person who shared it, but also just said it really helped her in the time she was going through. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good way to, it's kind of the new way to invite people to church. Oh, I like that. You like that? Right? So invite somebody, and here's all you got to do. For those of you who are watching on Facebook, or even if you're here in the room, you can just, you can go to your page on Facebook, or I mean, go to Facebook Live and go to King Circle, and then like it, and then share it, and when you share it, it goes to your page, and then all your friends get to see it, and uh, they can choose whether to watch it or not, but... Yeah. Uh, We've yeah. been seeing cool story. You had a story about her. We talked about a story a couple weeks ago, huh? When yeah. That happened to Gal. Yeah. And in fact, you think about it. When we just do simple things like that, say we don't do it and we don't reach that person, well, that does, didn't give them the opportunity to draw close to God. Uh, that's why some people, I, I just encourage people, invite people to church whenever you can because it's not getting them into a building or getting them to watch an online service. It's getting them to God. It's getting mm -hmm. them to Jesus. And who knows, you know, again, this, this uh, individual a few weeks ago, she just said it, it was exactly what she needed, going through a very difficult time in life. And she may be joining us again tonight. She said she'd be back on. And so, well, there you cool. go. And the gospel is what it's, it's really it's all about. It's not just getting more numbers or, you know, it's about helping people and blessing people. And that's why we're here. We're not doing it because we got nothing else to do. Uh, we're doing it because we want to get the word out and we want to be a blessing and yeah. blessing to you and your family and your friends. And so, those of you that are there online, especially, that's. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Um, and Chandra's there. Make sure you mm. say hello. Say hi Come to on. Chandra right now. Just type in the chat. Say hi, King Circle family. Hey, Chandra, what's up? Uh, how many more weeks do you have until the baby? Whatever. Ooh. Just say hello to Chandra about some. Did you know Chandra's pregnant? Did you yeah. know that? Yeah, yeah it's, that's pretty that. obvious on Sundays on Sunday, when yeah. she's up here, isn't it? Uh, what else we got, Bill? Uh, we want to make sure we get to uh, some of the review from last week. Or? Right. In fact, I, I'm still going to say it because we've had this week I had someone say, well, I'm going to join in on Wednesday night the first time. Uh, we have the God's Answers to Life's Difficult Questions study guide. We're still here for four more weeks. Actually, mm -hmm. five weeks, but we have a week. Uh, so we're doing something different in a few weeks. We'll talk about that later. But this is a great study guide. Even if you haven't been a part the last few weeks, uh, you can get in, get started from the beginning if you want. All the answers, there's fill in the blanks, but it's all in the book. And for the next few weeks, even if there's one, just one question left, this book has been great. I love the, the interaction it provides. Well, yeah, and we were, Bill and I were talking, and we've been talking recently about what we want to do in the winter and uh, the, kind of the next semester after the first of the year and what kind of, what's our strategy for a Wednesday night group and so forth. And we're kind of comparing it to this, you know, because we could do certain things and we're like, oh, but it doesn't have the DVD or, oh, it doesn't have the workbook or, you know, different things, which you don't have to have all of those things, but they're helpful. Yeah. And they keep other people engaged. And you might be sitting there, well, let's just study this. Well, not everybody's just like you and you can just study in the Word. A lot of people uh, appreciate something practical yeah. to walk through and to lead them through. Good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, when you uh, skipped out on us last week, Bill. Last week, just a, a quick review, and then we'll get into uh, a, a few more things. But uh, last week, we talked about respect. And I can't believe I didn't ever sing the song, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, oh, find out what it means to me. I thought for sure you would have. I know. I think I planned on it, but I never wrote it down. I'm like, I don't need to write it down. Of course I'm going to sing that. And then I just never did. And I'm still not going to. But in any case, we talked about respect. And uh, mainly, and maybe for those of you who are there, grab your books, open them up. We'll just look at it just real quickly. Rem just for a quick reminder of those six things mm -hmm. uh, that we talked about that we went through. Now, Bill, I know you weren't here. Maybe there's some things uh, that you would want to talk about, uh, how, how we can live a life of respect, how we can be a person of, of high-quality character 
and integrity. That's really what the, the whole DVD was about and what the, the questions were about and the points, yeah. the six points, how to earn respect. Yep, and I did, I did watch the teaching, just yeah. so you know. And uh, I love one thing that uh, Pastor Rick Warren said. He said, build character, not image. I thought that was great. You know, social media is pretty much all about image, and even not just in our general daily life. A lot of our what we do is about image, even if we it may not all be negative, but it's about how people see us or how we want them to see us. But he said, don't focus on your clothes and your shoes and your hair. He said, make sure character is the priority. I love that. Build character. I, I thought image was everything. Not image. Well, no. Okay. No, no. Okay. So we said last week we talked six. Uh, ingredients, or I guess he said uh, six ways to earn respect. Mm -hmm. So here they are real quickly. We'll just go through them on page 37 if you got your booklet and you want to look at that. Uh, integrity, humility, dependability, priorities, generosity, and spirituality. Uh, wow. let, you know, being a person, respect is earned through humility. It's earned through dependability. It's earned through living by priorities. Earned through generosity. It's earned through spirituality. Yeah. Uh, so we talked, we went through all of those last week. Good, yeah. Actually, the one that jumped out at me, I think it's good to pick one. At least for me, I, I, if I work on six things, I probably won't do a whole lot. But I can pick one thing and focus on it. I, I'm focusing on number three, respect is earned through dependability. Mm. That's been something I, I have worked on during my life, but I, it's just something I want to continue to grow in. Uh, and I love that scripture from Psalm 15. In fact, you read that sometime, that whole psalm was great. I think it's like six verses long. It talks about who will dwell in God's house in his presence. And one of the qualities of a person who dwells with God is he who keeps his oath even when it hurts. Mm -hmm. I think another version said, he who swears to his own hurt and does not mm -hmm. change. So uh, keep my word, period. <laughs> if I say it, do it. And that, well, for me, it helped me to understand that doesn't mean I do everything I'm asked. It means I say yes when I mean yes and no when I mean no. And that's the important thing. Remember, we can say yes, we can say no, but when we say yes, we need to mean it and need to keep our word because that, that creates respect. That respect gets earned. It's good. Can I just say, as a person who's known you for 30 something years, not just to be too corny here, but honestly, Bill, of, of these six, uh, that might be the number one. If I was going to say, well, which one describes you the most, Bill? I would say you were, you were so dependable. And uh, I appreciate that as a friend. I appreciate that as a pastor and leader in our church. And um, it's, it's high quality. It, it, I respect you. Remember, we're talking about respect. I respect you because you're dependable. So I'm just one guy, but, but I, I, I see, I, I respect people who are, who are dependable. And... Um, it's a bummer, and I know people, we probably all could think of people that we know who were like, well, let's ask them to be there, and it's like, oh, will they be there? They might, you know. Let's not ask them, because we really need to make sure somebody's there and on time, prepared, and ready to go. And, uh, and I feel like you're, you know, maybe, maybe this is a good thing. People who can't say no. People, there's some people that, you, well, you don't want to say no. So you say yes, but then you really can't come through with it. And that's why that swearing to your own hurt uh, means something. So maybe it's helpful if you have to go, hey, before you say yes, say, can, I, can I get back to you on that? And while I want somebody, and I want somebody, when I ask for something, I want you to say yes to me. But <laughs> it's, it's good when you can say, you know what, Frank, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Uh, let me talk to my wife. Let me, let me check my schedule. Let me make sure that that works. And uh, so I appreciate that you do that, Bill. That's good. I, lo I love that the scripture in the New Testament says that your yes be no yes and your no, no. So in other words, it's okay to say yes, it's okay to say no, but mean it when you say it. And Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you sure. M uh, but just before we move on, and I think I said this last week, but my, my one that I probably value the most, and maybe it's just because I think it's one, the one that I, I esteem the most. I'm not sure if this is my highest one, but... But this is number six, that respect is earned through spirituality. And not just because I'm a pastor. Or I don't know. It, it, I feel like I'm a pastor because that's who I am. I think I'm a, a spiritual leader because that's who I am. Not, I mean, I want to be, be better at it. I want to grow at that. But I, I, I'd like to say that even if I wasn't, I didn't have this role or this job or this position or this platform or this microphone, I feel like that would still be such a value to me. And... Uh, and I guess to be quite honest, when I get around people that are spiritual, and we don't have to time, we don't have the time tonight to talk about what that means. But when today I had lunch, well, actually he just walked in. But I today I had lunch with Christian, Pastor Christian, with Chi Alpha, and we talked for nearly two hours, I think, just spiritual, biblical principles. 
And I'll say to you right now, Christian, just you, you being here right now, but just for me, not only, not only do I feel closer to you, but I respect you more. And, and he brought, he, I'm just telling you, he, we talked about things that we didn't necessarily agree on every little thing. We didn't think exactly the same way. And he's like, why do you think that? And I'm like, well, here are the scriptures. I'm like, why do you think that? And he's like, well, here are the scriptures. I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. And he's like, oh, I never looked at that scripture. And when you do that, like the respect level of, of spirituality, so it doesn't have to be just with another pastor. But when I hear about a, a, a dad who's praying with his kids or a family that takes time to go through a devotion with them or, you know, any, anything like that. Or, boy, when that sickness came in our home, we went and laid hands on our kids or, you know, we, we memorized this scripture together. I, for me, I, I just respect that so much because I know it's not easy and I know it doesn't come natural to our you know, our flesh nature, our worldly nature, our, our, you know, just what, what the world is not telling us to live like that, you know, so to be spiritual, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work hard at it, right? I love what you said, though, it's like, even if you had a different calling in life, mm. and I think, at least before I was a pastor, I'd look at the, you know, people, the pastors, and evangelists, and people in church, and man, these are the spiritual people, no, we're each called to do what we do, and we can each be spiritual in that role. There isn't a more spiritual role than another. You know, we just happen to be in church leadership. Whatever you're doing, if you work at McDonald's, man, you can be the most spiritual person with the joy and the concern for people and whatever it takes. I mean, no matter what role God has called you to, no matter where you're, if you're home with your kids all day long, man, that's a real tough place to be still. I mean, that's where you really got to be spiritual. And I think, man, you can make a difference, influence others, and earn the respect of others, including your children, just as mm -hmm. you lead them in a spiritual way. It's yeah. a good point, man. It's not, well, and in the business world, in the education world, wherever you are, boy, if you can bring that spirituality, I believe people will respect that. Uh, you know, obviously in some places in, in the secular world, you can't, you know, promote that too much, but you can promote the values and the principles. And, you know, in the right environment, you can share that your, your Christian beliefs, you can share your Christian beliefs, Christian. Why do you act like that? Why are you so generous? Why, do, why are you so kind in that way? Why do you treat? Well, because I'm a believer in Jesus, and I, I read the Bible, and I pattern my life after the Bible, and you know, when you start talking like that, if, you, if it's in the right setting, and you're allowed to communicate like that, you know, people want to hear that, because people, people will respect that. Now, not everybody, and some people are going to be cynical and whatever, but I, I think most people are going to respect that if you're being respectful. Yeah. In fact, you'll have the people who respect you and probably the people who l mock you. Yeah. It's okay to be mocked if you're being godly. <laughs> That's the good thing, actually. In fact, I just, just real quick, yeah. read a story today. You might have seen it in the news about Tim Tebow. Uh, obviously, he was a great football player, but just a great example. And uh, one of his ex-teammates, they he was mocking Tim today, I think, kind of in the article, because Tim wouldn't swear. They actually had a play that they would call an audible in the, on the football field that, you know, they changed the play, and it involved a swear word, and Tim Tebow wouldn't say the word. In fact, I guess he didn't tell the guys ahead of time, but when he got in the play, they're going to change the play, and he said, you guys know what I should say, but I'm not going to say it. That was how he didn't swear. He, and they, the, the guy today who wrote said, we had no idea what he was talking about. So probably they lost 10 yards on the play. Right. But Tim Tebow kept his integrity. You know, yeah, He kept his spirituality. Go. I just thought that's a great example. Some people will mock you, but that's okay. If God's honoring you, who cares what everybody else is doing, right? Exactly. Yeah, but it's we good. will earn people's respect as that's we good. live in a spiritual way. Okay. Respect. Speaking of respect, uh, let's let's take a few moments before we're going to get into tonight's message and stuff. But let's take a moment and at least uh, say thank you to all you veterans out out there today. Today is Veterans Day, and if you've seen it on social media or on television or wherever it might have been, uh, hopefully, if you're watching, you're here in the room, and you've served in any of the armed forces in any at any period of time. We just want to say we honor you. Uh, we're thankful for you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your serving. Thank you for the freedoms that you helped provide or enforce. Uh, we are grateful for you. Yep. And uh, we want to uh, at least take the stance that we will do everything we can to always remember and uh, never forget what you've done for us. And so we're, we don't take it lightly, no right? Way. Lay down your life for a friend. That's, mm -hmm. that's biblical. And that's anybody biblical. who served in the military was laying down their life. 
And in fact, you'd asked me earlier about maybe somebody I knew. And my dad didn't talk much about it, but he was a Marine back in the 40s. He got, fortunately, I'm thankful, he got in right after World War II and left right before the Korean War. Mm. Maybe I wouldn't have been born if that hadn't happened. What, <laughs> that'd be a bummer, huh? Right. No, but I'm saying thank you, Dad, for laying down your life. And he actually has passed away now. And uh, my uh, wife's two, two brothers both uh, were in the military during Vietnam. One of them actually mm -hmm. went over to Vietnam. And just the stories, I mean, you know, they, a lot of them survive physically, but are paying a high price mentally, emotionally. And man, we can't thank people enough who laid down their lives. So we probably all know some and maybe many, maybe many more than we realize because they're all around us. But man, thank you for serving. We wouldn't have what we have today. Yeah, that's true. Those people. And you know that, and you mentioned that about just suffering with the, the post, I guess the PTSD that people deal with. So it's real. We think about you. We pray for you and let us know if we can ever be a part of that. Just recently this year, I think we've lost two of our, uh, of our veterans from our church in uh, Bob Robinson and uh, and then Gene Abraham passed away last week. Both were veterans. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we, we remember them. And you, you mentioned that about Vietnam. I had two uncles that served in the Vietnam War as well. One in particular did some pretty serious combat. And I think he's doing fine now. He's, I mean, he's still alive. He lives in uh, Tennessee. But uh, but he tells some fun, funny stories. I guess they're not funny, but uh, remember stories. Was first, those first few years that he came back, and he was married to my aunt, and and he'd wake up in the middle of the night and jump out of the bed. He'd <laughs> do crazy things, just scare the wajibis out of my aunt, you know, and stuff. But uh, yeah, they, it's it's real stuff. So we appreciate. It. That's when we when we say we, we we appreciate your sacrifice. We know that it wasn't just time, you know, just. It wasn't just a job, you know. It was serving God. It was serving our country. It was, it was a purpose, and we yeah. appreciate that. Amen. How about we pray real quick? Yeah, let's do that. Father, we thank you for our veterans today. We thank you, God, for just bringing a great honor to their lives, a peace mm. to their lives. Thank you, Father, that uh, those even that are watching and with us now, that you are just giving them a sense of the honor that uh, you have for them and that we have for them as well. We do pray, Father, that you bring healing to those that are in need of it. You bring strength. You bring the love of Jesus. Thank you. Salvation is reaching people. The gospel. Send labors into the lives of those that don't know you, those veterans that haven't connected with you yet, that they will share your goodness and they will open their hearts to you. We give you honor for working in life simply because of this prayer tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's good. I'm glad we took a moment to do that. In fact, if you want to, we give you permission, even while we're having this service going on right now, if you want to text one of uh, somebody that you know just to say, hey, it's Veterans Day, I honor you. In fact, it makes me want to text my Uncle Bob. I'm going to do that when good. the service is over and text him. Good. We'll be really late there. But anyways, at least I'll sneak it in. And I think about my nephew. I didn't even think about him. Yeah. I could have sent my, uh, my nephew. So I'm just saying, uh, let's not forget, right? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's remember to do that. All right, uh, session five. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Okay, session five. Would you turn in your, uh, in your booklets to page 45? And uh, we're going to dive into this, and we're going to get to the video here in just a second. But we, we're, we're going to get to a topic that is maybe really, uh, really relevant. And, and it, it probably always is. In fact, this DVD series was written years ago. So it wasn't, it wasn't like it's only because of our pandemic in the year 2020. Uh, but the, the, this, this pandemic and the election year and this isolation and the quarantining and face masks and social distancing has all added to this topic, which he addresses the question, how can I overcome loneliness? So tonight and next week, Bill and I are going to talk, and tonight we're going to watch the video. We'll go through the booklet, but we want to talk about loneliness and how to process it. And from a biblical standpoint, and what does the Word of God say? Now tonight, we're going to, the emphasis is going to be on, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the presence of God. And that first, if we're going to uh, attack the issue of loneliness, we've got to realize that the supreme being, our Savior Jesus Christ, uh, our Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit is within us, and He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And so we'll talk more about that and really know, knowing what it, what it means to draw close to Him and have that relationship with Jesus. 
And then by next week, and, and most of next week, I think we'll spend on relationships with one another and how to develop that relationship, that loan, or how to answer that question of loneliness with one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll be good. That'll be good because I love that Pastor Rick starts with that foundation of God and, and mm -hmm. relationship with him because he never leaves us, never forsakes us. Now, people may leave us or forsake us, but he's, God still puts a great value on the relationship with people because not everybody's going to leave you or forsake you. Yeah. So that's important. God will never leave you, and there'll be people around that won't as well. So both are important, right. God and, and people. I mean, even ultimately when they said, Jesus, what's the most important thing? He said, love God. In other words, get close to God. Stay close to God. Honor him. But then he said, also love one another and stay close to one another. And so I think, I think t tonight and next week, we're going to talk about what does the Word of God say and how do we address issues of loneliness. And before we do, just think about your, your lonely times. And everybody deals with it. I'm a real outgoing, extroverted person. I'm kind of motivated and stimulated and energized by the crowd and people and I'm kind of a life of the party kind of a guy many of the times that way. Not everybody is, some people are even more than I am, and other people are, are much less. My wife is, is much less than that. She goes to a party, and she gets, like, she just wants to go over and find one friend and sit next to, or, to them and talk to them all night long in a corner. And she feels like, wow, that was a great time. So I get it. Not everybody's the same, but we all deal with loneliness in different ways. And maybe I want you to examine this. How do you deal with lonely, what, what things make you lonely? Uh, when, do you, when do you feel lonely? Because we can feel lonely in a crowd. We can feel lonely when we're, when we've got, you know, when we're the captain of the team or the president of the club or the organization, when we've got all the money in the world, we can still deal with that kind of loneliness. Yeah. Right? I love what you said. Sometimes in a crowd can be the most lonely feeling because mm -hmm. you, you should not be lonely in the mind. It's like, I shouldn't be lonely. I've done, I've been there. I've been where there's a crowd and I feel more lonely than I've felt when I'm, anytime I'm by myself. Right. I think that's good to plug in and be aware. Here, here's, here's when I can get tempted to be lo lonely. In fact, uh, Rick will talk about that different even times of day uh, where we can be drawn into loneliness more than other times, but it's good for each of us. We're all different. So, you know, we have those warning signs of, okay, this is, I might even be entering a situation where this has been a place where I've had to battle loneliness or feeling alone. And uh, so we can combat that. Okay, and I'm going to say one more thing before we roll the video is that not only do I want us to apply it to ourselves and when do we feel lonely and how are we lonely? How do I deal with loneliness? Uh, and how do I prevent loneliness in my life? And all of that tonight and next week. I want you also to think, I, I'm hoping we can also think of others. Other people in our life, our spouse, our children, our friends. Can we recognize loneliness in them? Can we help them to uh, be healed from their loneliness when, when our friends and our spouse are struggling with that distance and that disconnectedness. And maybe you're feeling like, oh, this is great. I went to church and everything feels great. And somebody else is like, ah, I just, I still, I went to church too, but I just feel disconnected. And uh, so maybe, maybe through tonight and through uh, next week, we can, we can move forward in that. That's good. It's great to grow, and then great to grow so we can help others. I exactly, love that thought. Exactly, exactly. So in your book, again, fill in the blanks. You'll have the blanks on the, on the video. Uh, if you miss any of the fill in the blanks, you can go to page 81. I think it starts on. And uh, if, online, make sure if you have questions as you're, as you're watching the video, you're listening. If you have questions, make sure you chat. Put them in the chat. If you have areas that you've grown in or are growing in tonight, and same here in the sanctuary. you got little cards there at each set of chairs. Love to hear from you. We'd mm -hmm. love to answer your questions in the upcoming weeks. If you have them, let us know. Good. Hey, let's pray before we uh, dive into the video. Father, we pray right now for those that are watching online, here in the room. Father, we pray with this, this topic of loneliness. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would minister to our hearts tonight. Minister to our minds. Help us to, to draw close to you as you draw close to us. And, and give us some skills and some knowledge and wisdom and insights to, uh, to, to minister to one another and to, to be encouraged uh, in our walk with you, in our walk with others. We believe for that, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Here's Pastor Rick Warren.
uh, work on a little technical difficulties. Looks like we had video, but they're uh, working on the audio. We didn't have audio in the room either. So they're going to tweak with that. And uh, I don't know, they're going to do somersaults or something like that to let us know when, uh, when they're available. The good news is they'll, they'll tweak it here in just a second. And it's about, 20, what, it's about 23 minutes yep. long. So uh, we'll get to it in just a minute. Bill, can I throw it to you to, uh, to maybe we can uh, look through a couple of the different parts of the, of the, the workbook or uh, loneliness? Um, or we want to dive into it maybe about you even. I don't want to put you on the spot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you want to talk about loneliness? I, earlier, uh, I was thinking about when was a time where I felt, like, lonely. I'll, I'll, I might, you know, he, he had a good point. You can be alone but not feel lonely. And I think that's good. But I, one of the times that I felt loneliest in my life was, I've, and it's continued at times, is when I get under stress, I kind of shut my wife out, shut other people out. I can handle this. Mm -hmm. And there was a time, I'm nine years ago, I remember when it was, where just I was carrying so much stress for the job and just marriage was going well, but this job and other things were not going well. And just a lot, carrying a lot. And I just remember looking back now, just that I felt alone. And I remember a day driving down the road, and for the first time, and I don't remember how long, I just started crying. Wow. And it was just, and I think just all that pent up guard that was around me kind of caught up, caught up with me. And I just remember just feeling that, realizing, man, I've been, I've been keeping people mm -hmm. out. And I started opening it up to God, number one. Again, God's the number one key in our. Uh, getting over that loneliness, but also open up to my wife, uh, sharing things with other people I need to share, and just coming through stronger. And I still have to guard that, though. When I get stressed, that's mm. when I feel loneliness. That's where I isolate. That's where I distance. And it's funny, you mentioned the words distance, quarantine. We, we didn't use those words 12 months ago. No. You know, I mean, they were around, but man, it's just, it's, we're in a whole new world, but it's good to plug in. You know, again, what, what situations cause me to isolate myself and distance myself. And I'm not talking about because of a pandemic. I'm talking just because about a heart issue. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was, I remember that time. It's, uh, so it what about difficult. you? And maybe you want to write that down, jot it down maybe in your, in your book. Can you think of a time like Bill just shared a personal story or a, 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 a season when you tend to be emotional and you tend to be, uh, what would you say? You know, you tend to, to feel disconnected or you disconnect from others. What, it, what causes that for you? As you were speaking, Bill, I was thinking about for me, uh, mine's maybe a little bit different. Uh, imagine that. Imagine that we're different, Bill. Oscar and Felix. Right, right? that's exactly it. Uh, but mine is, I, I'm going to summarize by saying it's, it's unmet expectations. And I think I get into... I don't know if I go all the way to feel sorry for myself or I feel like I'm a victim, but I set these expectations. This is how my marriage should be. And when my marriage is in that way, I just feel like a failure and I feel like nobody understands and I feel discouraged. And somehow in that unmet expectations level, I feel alone. Um, or... Or it could be anything. It's like, I think I'm going to be healthy and strong. And then if I get symptoms on my body, I just think, wow, I didn't see that coming. And I think, I just, I, I feel like, where did I miss it? I just, those unmet expectations. Fine. You know what else that happens? It happens here at the church. And I think, man, this is the Sunday and it's going to feel like this. And the people are going to this. And I'm going to preach and the music and the this. And, and then when those expectations don't happen, whatever it might be. I think five people are going to get saved today, and no one does. And I think we're going to, this is, and this is how, and when I tell this story, and I preach this way, and that doesn't happen, I just feel lonely. So it's, it's not just discouragement. It's, it's, I feel disconnected. I feel lonely, and I think, well, who am I going to tell? Who can I, who, who, who understands? Who's going to understand me? And and I don't want to bring anybody. I don't want to bring you down. I don't want to go home and bring my wife down. Okay, I just need to suck it up, and I just need to, you know, and we get in our heads, and we think, so I don't know, expectations. Yeah. Uh, 
So maybe as we watch this video and, and listen to the video, because we got audio now, they gave me the thumbs up, uh, maybe think about how do you fit in this whole thing? How do you fit in this whole picture? What's the Holy Spirit want to speak to you now? All right, so here we go. Let's do it again. Take two, Rick Warren. Hi everybody, I'm Rick Warren and welcome back to our Purpose Driven Connection series on God's answers to life's difficult questions. If I were to ask you what you thought is the most common emotional pain in society today, what would you say? Depression, anxiety, guilt, anger, bitterness, fear? Did you know that sociologists tell us that the single most common emotional pain in our society is loneliness? Yeah, it's loneliness. You know, you can see this from a lot of telltale signs. 800 number call-in chat lines where you pay to talk to a stranger about nothing. Uh, the internet now connects millions of people in uh, chat rooms and blog pages because people are lonely. If you watch a beer commercial today, they're not really about alcohol or even the taste of beer. They're selling fellowship. We gotta have a good time. They always show people together having a great time. You never see anybody drinking by themselves. They're happy, they're smiling, their arms around each other, they're having fun, they're accepting. They're not, they're not selling taste, as I said. They're, they're, they're saying, if you drink our product, you'll have friends. Now the truth is, God made us to need each other. We need people. We don't need to be alone. In fact, God hates loneliness. Did you know that? In Genesis 2.18, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. Now, God had put Adam in a perfect environment in the Garden of Eden where he had literally everything, everything could possibly want, it was there. And uh, no problems at all, no sin, no heartaches, no suffering. And yet God looks down at Adam and says, this, there's something here that's not good. And the first thing that God says wasn't good was loneliness. God hates loneliness. Why? Because God is love, and God is in relationship to himself, and even in the perfect environment, we need more than ourselves. Now, God has provided us with three resources, or three remedies, to reduce the pain of loneliness in our lives, and that's what I'd like for us to look at uh, in this session. First, God has given to us his plan to live for. A plan to live for gives us a way to break out of loneliness and a solitary life. Whether you ever get married or not is irrelevant. You're going to need God's plan in your life to break out of loneliness. When you're focusing on God's plan for your life, uh, you don't have a lot of time to have pity parties or feel lonely. You're focusing on what God wants you to do. Second, God has given us His people to live with. And the Bible says God sets the lonely in families. And if you're a believer, you have a family, whether you have a physical family or not. That family is the church. The Bible calls the church the family of God. And one of the purposes of having a small group and why we teach that it's so important that you have a small group is to provide you with relationship opportunities so that when you go through the inevitable rogue winds and crises and storms of life, there's somebody there to help you that you were never meant to go through life by yourself without a helping hand and a shoulder to lean on and things like that. So we get God's plan, we get God's people. The third resource God has given to us is what I'd like to focus on most in this session, and that is God's presence. His presence to live with us and in us and through us. The Bible says this in Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And the answer to that question is, I can't go anywhere without God's presence. You cannot escape from God's presence because God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. There is no place in the universe where God is not. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, He's in you. So He's around you, He's with you, He's through you, and He's in you. But unless you learn to sense His presence, I mean feel His presence, 
I'm talking about experiencing his presence. You're not going to really benefit from it. You won't benefit from his presence in his life if it's just a head knowledge that I know God is with me and in me and through me all the time. That will not take away your loneliness. You need to experience it. You need to experience the truth of Hebrews 13, 5 that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, says the Lord. God is always with you, but you aren't always recognizing it. And that's what we have to learn how to do, how to recognize the presence of God in our lives. When you tune into God and you realize that he's with you all the time and that you're never by yourself and that his presence will be with you no matter what you go through, four things become true in your life. First, you figure out that he, God, will help you out. He'll help you out. The Bible says this, don't worry because I'm with you. Don't be afraid because I'm your God. I'll make you strong and I will help you and I will support you. Isaiah 41 10. Now notice in that verse the three things that God says about you and his presence. He says, I will make you strong. He says, I will help you out. And he says, I will support you. Who doesn't need that? He's saying no matter what you face, you don't have to face it alone. What I'm trying to say is this. There's a big difference between being alone and being lonely. If God is with you, and you sense his presence, you may be alone, but you won't be lonely. The Bible says in Psalm 27, 10, if my mother and father leave me, in other words, if I get abandoned by my parents, I'm an orphan, I'm rejected by my own family, he says, the Lord will take me in. Hmm. And 2 Corinthians 4, 9 says, God never and that word in Greek is the strongest, no, 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 no. God never abandons us. If everybody in my life walks out on me, God's never going to walk out on me. If everybody in your life walks out on you, God's not going to walk out on you. God walks in when everybody else walks out. If I realize that he's with me, he will help me out. Now, the second thing is, God will not only help me out, if I recognize his presence, he'll calm me down. Sometimes I need to be helped out. Sometimes I just need to be calmed down. God is the great stress reliever. He's the great stabilizer in all those inevitable crises of life. He, he, he'll, he'll be your peace in the midst of the storm. Now, think about this. When is loneliness the most difficult? What time of day? Well, everybody knows what time of day. At night. When you're alone at night, your fears tend to exaggerate. When you're alone at night, your mind goes into overdrive. And God says, you know what? If you will sense my presence in the nighttime, I will calm you down. In fact, here's a great verse. I memorized this many, many years ago when I was a single adult. I will lie down in peace and sleep. For though I am alone, O Lord, you will keep me safe. I love that. Psalm 4.8 in the Living Bible. It might be a good verse for you to write on a little card and put by your bedside or put it, paste it on your bedpost. The Bible says you protect them by your presence. Here's a, the, an equation to remember. One plus God equals majority. He says, I'll take care of you. You recognize my presence. It's going to calm you down. I don't know if you've got these in your neighborhood, but in our neighborhood, a lot of our <coughs> neighbors have these signs out front that say, protected by, and it'll say, Brinks protection or Acme protection or whatever. And when I read this verse that we just looked at, I thought I'd... I, I, I'd like to make up a sign that says, put it in front of my house, it says, protected by God and Son, Inc. Guaranteed eternal security. Because you can't get a better key, guarantee than God saying, I will protect you, I'll help you out. So God says, I will help you out. I will calm you down. The third thing he says, when you tune into him, I will cheer you up. 
Sometimes you need God's presence to calm you down. Sometimes you need God's presence to cheer you up. And God says, when you're going through tough times, I will cheer you up if you'll recognize my presence. The Bible says this, I keep the Lord before me always. Because he is close by my side, I will not be hurt. So I rejoice. In other words, I cheer up. I get happy. I party down. I rejoice. And I'm glad. In other words, I'm happy. I'm high. I'm doing good. Even my body has hope. Psalm 16. Now, you know what that verse says? It says that I'm consciously choosing to keep God as the focus in my mind, to think on Him and to focus on His presence and say, Lord, I know you're here. You're with me. And, and I'm talking to you just like you're right here with me. When you're alone, you have two choices. You can choose to focus on loneliness or you can choose to focus on the fact that God has never left you, that He's with you, He's in you, and that choice is the choice to rejoice. You know, in the Bible, King David often felt the pain of, uh, of loneliness. He was rejected. He spent much of his time having to run from King Saul. And yet in Psalm 16, 11, he writes, Your presence fills me with joy. You ever thought about this? How do you know when somebody is walking in the presence of God? I'll tell you, they're full of joy. How do you know when somebody's not walking in the presence of God? They're not full of joy. They're cranky. They're despondent. They're critical. They're cynical. The presence of God guarantees joy in our lives. God says, I'll help you out. I'll calm you down. I'll cheer you up. Just recognize my presence. Oh, here's the fourth thing. When you tune in to God, he says, I'll see you through. And that's a big one. I'll see you through. The Bible says this. In Isaiah 43, when you go through deep water and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. God is not going to let you sink. He says, I will help you out. I'll see you through. I'll calm you down. And I'm going to help you in this. Even when you feel like you can't go on another day, you can't put one foot in front of another you're ready to throw in the towel. You've just picked up the phone. You got the bad news. I will see you through. Did you know that there are television and radio waves going through this room right now? They're going through it all the time. You can't see them. But these radio and television waves are actually going through walls. They're going through your body. Uh, and, and you don't feel them. But they're there. They're real and they are there. But if you have the right mechanism called a tuner, you can tune in to either those radio waves or those television waves, and all of a sudden they show up on a picture screen or on a radio, and you can take advantage of it, and you can hear it, and you can see it. But you can't take advantage of them until you tune in. Now, this is the same way it is with God. God is present in this room right now, in your room right now. He's there, he's here, and he's near. And he's all around you. And if you're a believer, he's actually inside of you. So I don't feel it. I don't see it any more than I see or feel the radio and TV rays. But it doesn't mean they're not real. But in order to benefit from God's, <clears throat> God's presence, you have to tune in. How do you do that? How do you tune into God on a moment-by-moment -moment basis? Well, there are two ways you set the tuner dial in your life. First, you got to desire it. You must desire a relationship with God. You must want to know Him, want to feel His presence. You know, God doesn't butt into people's lives. He's a gentleman. One of the reasons why a lot of times we don't sense God's presence is because we're just too busy. We're too distracted. We don't have time for God. Except, Sorry, God, I'll talk to you later. And the reason I haven't got to know God is because I don't have any time. What you have to do is tell God, God, I really do want to know you. I want to know you personally. I want to sense your presence in my life. I'm earnest about this. In fact, I want it to be the most important thing to me. 
And I want to get up in the morning and sit on the side of my bed and say, God, I want to know you better today. I want to love you more today. I want, to, want you to be in my life, and I want to feel you today. This is what David said in Psalm 27. The one thing that I want from God, the thing I seek most of all, is the privilege of living in His presence every day of all my life. Because that's what I want most. Now, let's just be honest. Do you want that most? Or really, you'd rather have comfort most, or money most, or satisfaction most, or a husband, or a wife most, or whatever. If you tell God earnestly that you want to know Him, and you want to know His presence, He will make Himself real to you. And if you haven't already done so, invite Jesus Christ, His Son, to put His Spirit inside your life. God promises this in Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. I said there were two things you got to do. The first is desire, to tune into God. You got to have that desire. I want to know and feel God's presence. And then the second thing, you must dedicate. You must dedicate time to get to know him. Just like any relationship, it takes time to develop. Whether it's a friendship or a marriage or any other kind of relationship, it takes time to get to know God. So you've got to set aside some time on a daily basis when you say, God, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to turn on the radio. I'm not going to turn on the iPod. I'm not going to turn on the TV. I'm going to be still and know that you are God. I'm going to be quiet and listen to you. Is there anything you want to say to me? I do this all the time. I just sit down in a chair like this, sometimes outside, take a deep breath, just be quiet. And then in that quietness, I say, God, is there anything you want to say to me? And, and I just listen. And I calm my heart. And after my heart's calm, I listen. And then I talk about what's on my heart in prayer. So that when crises come, I'll already be in your presence. I'll already know you in a personal way. And I'll be ready for anything that you want me to face. Now the quickest way to tune into God, into his presence, is to develop the habit of praise. God says in Psalm 22, 3, that God inhabits the praises of his people. He enters into them. We enter into his gates with his thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, says Psalm 100. So here's my suggestion. Try singing. <laughs> you say, oh, no, you got to be kidding, Rick. I couldn't carry a tune in a baggie. So the Bible doesn't say you have to be in tune. The Bible says make a joyful noise. Anybody can make a joyful noise. And you're not singing for other people anyway. You're singing for God. And you know what? God loves it when you make a joyful noise. So even if you can't sing in tune, God loves it as long as it's joyful and noisy. And if you can do that, then you're right on track. And you give God praise. And if God's everywhere, then guess what? I can praise God everywhere. I don't have to be in church. I can be in my car, I can be in the shower, I can be laying down resting, I can be taking a break, I could be at work, I can be washing dishes, taking out the garbage, playing with my kids, changing a diaper. I can praise God anywhere. And when you do that, the presence of God becomes more and more real. And then what do you say? Well, you just say, God, thank you for being in my life. Thank you that you're here to help me out. Thank you that you're here to cheer me up. Thank you that you're here to see me through. Thank you that you're here to calm me down. Thank you for life itself. Thank you for my church family. Thank you for my small group. Just start making a, a, a list of praising God. In fact, here's what you do. Here's a little thing I do. Go A to Z. And you start with A, and then you just think up all the A words. God, I want to thank you that you've adopted me into your family. Father, I want to thank you for all the advice I've got from your word. Father, I thank you for aardvarks and ants. 
I love apples. You just, you know, anything you can think of and you praise God for it. And then be, Lord, I thank you for the babies that are in my life. I got four little grandkids right now and they're so much fun. I thank you for the beauty of creation. I thank you for my babe named Kay, my wife. And you just go, it's, you could do it any way you want to. C, D, E, and you just, and by the time you get to Z, you're going to be happy. You can reduce the pain of loneliness in your life if you will take advantages of the resources that God has offered you. First, commit yourself to God's plan. And when God has a plan for your life, it involves other people. It, you cannot do God's plan by yourself. So you're going to get out of loneliness that way. Second, you need to get with God's people. A Christian without a church home is an orphan. The more you love the Lord, the more you're going to love the church. You need to be a part of a church family. If you don't have a church family, then go to the website, uh, the purposedriven.com website, where the Purpose Connection website is, and look on the church finder and find a church that you can be a part of. Or email us and let us help you find a church. You need a church home. You were never meant to go through life by yourself. Build up some relationships with there. Get in a small group. Take the initiative. If you want to break the grip of loneliness, do those things. Stop building walls and start building bridges. Get out of the doldrums and get in a ministry and find a place to start serving other, body, other people and somebody else. Finally, most important of all, develop practicing the presence of God in your life on a day-by-day -day basis. That includes having a daily quiet time, but it's much more than that. You have a daily time where you sit alone with God. It's your date with God. And you sit down and you be quiet. And you listen to Him. You read the Bible. You listen to Him. You pray and you talk to Him. You have a little conversation. It doesn't have to be long. Just start the day that way. Read the Bible and pray. And then the rest of the day, get a running conversation with God. And you, you talk to God about anything. Now, I don't know if you're lonely or not. But regardless of the source of your loneliness, God is with you. Yeah, He's with you. And there's never been a moment in your life when He wasn't with you. You just haven't been tuned in to Him. Jesus Christ is waiting to help you out. He's waiting to cheer you up. He's waiting to calm you down. And He's waiting to see you through. He's promised all of that in His Word. Let me close by letting me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this series that is being so helpful as it touches different areas of our lives. And today as we've looked at loneliness, help us to realize that we need your plan, your people, and your presence in our lives. That we weren't meant to go through life on our own. We weren't meant to be lone rangers. We were meant to be in community, in fellowship. And I thank you for thinking up the idea of the church. Lord, we know that there's no perfect church, but we do know that we need each other, and we cannot grow to maturity, and we cannot overcome loneliness with the help of a church family. So I pray every person here would open their lives to Christ, say yes to you, say yes to your plan, say less to your, yes to your people, and say yes to your presence. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you in the next session. Very good, huh? Oh, Amen. So, so, so good. Uh, and, and, you know, he finished there just before the prayer talking again about the body of Christ and the family of God and the church and the value of, of personal relationships. And so we might touch on that a little bit in the next 20 minutes or so, but, but the emphasis will, that'll be the emphasis next week. Yeah. So we'll talk more about that and building relationships with people and the struggle there and the loneliness and the companionship and the way God designed all of that. But, uh, boy, but it starts with the relationship with God, and that's what he really talked about the most tonight, right? Yeah, that was great. Earlier I shared when I felt the loneliest. Mm -hmm. the time, that same year, I actually later in the year, felt the least lonely. I felt closest to God huh. when my dad passed away, my father, and it was like just... Uh, it was a super difficult time, but I think that's where I just even more grounded into the fact that I have a father in heaven who is always with me because it was my mom passed away the same year a few months earlier. I think when my dad passed away, I was like, 
I don't have parents. <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's this new, new era of life. And I'm just sharing this because I know, you know, all, most of us are going to face that as, at some point in our life. And I know several people in our church just in, this year have faced it, losing parents and both parents in some cases. And I think that's the time where, man, I just realized God really is with me. And I really do have a father who never leaves me. And it just became, it was this before. Now it became a hard thing. And that was the time where, man, I just, I realized, okay, I don't have to be lonely ever again. And uh, I think, Very man, that connection to our Father is so key. Um, he, he shared just so many good thoughts there. It's interesting. That. Uh, when he was talking about that today, I mean, when he, on, the, on the video, it, it made me think of honestly about even with my own family. Uh, my, my sister died, and she was two years older than me. I think, uh, what was it, like 1991 or 90 or something like that. And then around 2000 and early 2000 or something like that, my dad passed away. And then just two years ago, my mother passed away. And that's when I had that thought for the first time. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm kind of all alone here. You know, I've got some kind of cousins and distant, but uh, I felt pretty disconnected, kind of out on my own, you know, in that, that way. But boy, knowing that you've got that heavenly father and knowing that you've got that personal relationship I think that's probably why I don't struggle with it. I don't feel that loneliness. Maybe having five kids helps too, but <laughs> you know, there's just, uh, there's that, that connection with, uh, with people and with God. How many, I wonder how many times in the Bible, I don't know, but how many times God said in some way, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake mm -hmm. you. I'm always with you. I'm with you. I mean, it's over and over and obviously we need to hear it. Obviously we need to know it. He could have said it once and it would have been true. But he said it so many times. If you just knew New Testament and Old Testament, and there's a reason why. I think it's a key for our lives is that connection with God, presence of God, uh, just that. And I love how he said it. He talked about having the uh, awareness, recognizing mm -hmm. God's presence. God is mm -hmm. always with us, but it's important we recognize it and we're aware of it. So, so just to reiterate, remember he said uh, at the very beginning, he said the number one issue in life, the one, number one complaint is loneliness. The biggest struggle is loneliness. So that's what we're talking about this. Yeah. So we all act like we're, we got it together. And uh, the reality is people are struggling. And, it, and again, like I said earlier, before the video, maybe you're kind of okay in that area, but I guarantee there's somebody close to you, someone in your life and in your world that, it, that struggles with it. I'm just praying that you'll be, be a blessing. So he starts with saying, before we deal with how to deal with people, we gotta deal with this relationship with God. Before we deal with the horizontal relationship, we gotta deal with the vertical relationship. So this, man, talking about the, the presence of God, this is easy for me. I love to talk about presence of God oh, man. Uh, did we want to talk about his uh, on the bottom of page 45 he says you got to have a plan mm -hmm. his people to live with and his presence to live in yeah great point he said no pity parties you know when you're into God's God's will I mean it doesn't mean we'll never have struggles and never feel down but I'm just saying we have a purpose and to me that that's an uplifter right there I mean just to know I'm even if I don't know what God's purpose is to realize God has a purpose man I want to discover that and we're always constantly discovering new phases of it but it's man that just adds excitement to life I'm getting excited just talking about well it. I think you're right because I think people struggle with loneliness who feel like they have no purpose if they have no vision they have what, what does it say without where there is no vision people perish and so, so having that plan, having a purpose, having a calling, have a, de a destiny, a, a reason to get out of bed in the morning, okay. you know, that's going to that's gonna help. So. Best selling book of all time, Purpose Driven Life, purpose besides driven the Bible, life. Purpose Driven yep. Life, written by Rick Warren. So there's a reason for that. In fact, we've done a study in mm -hmm. our community group here a few years ago through that. And it's a man, what a, that's an eye opener that the most bought purchase book in history besides the Bible is a purpose driven life people yeah. are looking for purpose yeah so number one was purpose at the bottom of page uh, 45 there and then number two was people that uh, you gotta you gotta have people in your life right. <laughs> excuse me you've got to have you've got to have a, a plan and purpose and then you've got to have people in your life yeah, so yeah. you got to get out there yeah I think my personality doesn't believe that I don't believe I have to have people that's just my personality and you're probably just the opposite mm -hmm. right odd couple right but that's 
My personality says that's not true, but my experience knows it's true. I know from experience, people are of such value. I get weird when I get by myself. I mean, all of us get strange when we get by ourselves. When we get on our own and left on our own, left on our own thinking, you know, we can just think odd things and just stuff that doesn't, isn't good for our lives. But when I get around people, people that challenge me, people that help me grow, like you said, you and Christian hanging out today for a few hours, that's, that was a few hours of growth simply because you're around somebody who's adding to your life and you're adding to their life. Proverbs says that he who isolates himself is not wise, right? And iron sharpens iron. And uh, yeah, the, the, the church, the family of God, which again, we'll get into that more next week. But so a plan, people, and then his presence. So let's spend these last uh, 10 or 15 minutes talking about his presence. See how far we can get into uh, the, the presence of God. Uh, where do you want to start? Four benefits of God's presence. Do you like God's presence, Bill? I like God's presence. He'll help you out. I love that scripture. I, I didn't, I, this is the second time I've watched this video, and I didn't really catch it the first time. Isaiah 41.10. In fact, that's a scripture I've memorized, but this is from a different version. The, the second part written down here in the booklet, Isaiah 41.10. God says, I will make you strong. I will help you. I will support you. I mean, just think mm. of all that help God offers. The Bible says he's our ever-present help in time of need. I guess we can always, of course, reject that help. But he just say, Matt, I will take care of stuff for you. Just let me do it. Let me be a part of your life. Yeah, and, and, and in his presence is fullness of joy. In his mm-hmm. presence is, is his peace, is his strength. And some of those are like feelings, but we have to, tr- we have to trust it by faith, don't we? We have to trust by faith that his word is true and that he places the lonely in families and that he is, he is helpful. But let's be real for a second, Bill. Uh, can we be real? Can let's we be, be real for a change? Come uh, on. So he'll help you out. But a lot of times we feel lonely because we do feel distant. We do feel like a failure. We do feel like we're out on our own. We feel like, ah, I tried. I, I tried to do this and I tried and yet I feel rejection. Maybe even we feel rejection from God. I mean, we have people come into our church all the time that they feel, they feel like, well, we're going to try this because we heard. But uh, when I was a kid, I, I felt the rejection, and they think that the church rejects them, then the people in the church. Boy, getting past that, that, yeah, that sense of uh, sense of rejection, and I'm not good enough, and I'm not accepted, and I'm not a part and to, to trust that God's going to be there to be help for us. Yeah, we all go through that. I, I, I just a few weeks ago, I just had some just feelings of it just wasn't right, and I just kind of felt bad, or I don't know, we're just kind of messed, mixed up or confused. And I thought, okay, I know my feelings right now are not right. The Word of God is right. Mm-hmm. So I went to the Scriptures. Is that's, that's where I go. And started reading Scriptures. And especially ones about, happen to be the ones about God being right here with us. Yeah. And man, that's to me, it's like, don't trust your feelings. Don't trust. Again, like you said, we, if we isolate ourselves, we, we, we get confused. And we start thinking things that aren't true. And we start believing the things we're thinking. That's where you go, okay, wait, I got to I gotta call Pastor Frank or something. You know, I got to call a friend. I got to get to the Word of God. I got to get understanding right now that God is with me no matter how I feel. In fact, Pastor Rick said it. He said, at one point he said, he, I don't think he meant to say, you know, be plugging into God like he's indicated we could feel God. But later on he said, don't go by your feelings. And I think that's what he was pointing out. Mm-hmm. It's don't go by what you feel, guys. If we go by what we're fi- we feel, we'll all be in trouble. There's times where I feel distant from God. I, I feel this, I feel that. Okay, but God has already promised I'm right there with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. Right wherever you're at in this room or at home or wherever you're watching, God is literally right there with you. That's amazing. The God of the universe is with us. That's incredible. So we're talking about his presence, and we're saying, number one, that his, a benefit of God's presence is, is that he helps us. Mm-hmm. Maybe before we go more into this, Bill, what is... How do we know we're in his presence? So, oh, great, I'm in his presence. Oh, yeah, now I got his help. Do we... Do we get his help and then that proves that we're in his presence or do we get in his presence and then we're helped? That's a good question. Right? Uh, I think that, that trusting in his presence, again, having that knowledge that he never leaves us, okay. that he never forsakes us, that he will not abandon us. Right. That's the scripture. Remember when he said he never, 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 never. God never abandons us. Right. 
We can abandon God. We can feel distant from God, but it's not, it's not because he's not there. Right. It's not because we fail him and we do. It's not because we miss the mark. And then he's like, oh, you're not good enough for me now. I'm leaving. You let me know when you get it all together and, uh, you know, and send me a resume and then I'll, I'll see if, I'll, if you can have a meeting with me. You know, he's never gone away. He's never closing the door. But I think that takes believing that. Yeah. That's part of that presence. Yeah, and I, we, we bring up his name often, but a guy named David in the Bible, I mean, he just went through hell on earth. I mean, the guy was constantly attacked by uh, people, enemies, by his own kids, but just attacked, attacked. Then he went out and sinned and did stupid stuff, but he always went back to God and said, God, where can I, in fact, where can I go from your presence? Yeah. Where can I hide? We read that verse a moment ago. Yeah. I mean, David knew where to go. He knew where the source, the scriptures, and the God and his spirit. He said, okay, I, I've, I've been attacked all the time. He could have easily felt. I'm sure he did feel at times, God, where are you? In fact, he said that oftentimes. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. Most of the uh, Psalms where he wrote, God, where are you? By the end, he's saying, you're right here with me. Yeah, so you're I think my rock, you're my himself. shelter, you're yeah. my foundation. I right. trust in you. Yeah. Uh, so we can go by our feelings. I mean, we, can, we, we have those feelings of doubt. We have those feelings of distance. We're like, come on, God, are you even there? It's okay to think that and feel that. It's not okay to live that and make a lot of decisions and change your Good. behavior based on those things. We have Good. to trust that, that, number one, that in his presence, uh, that he is there. A benefit to Good. his presence is help. help is, uh, Amen. And we got to trust that he's, he's always there. I, I, and I think, and maybe we'll get into this a little bit more, but I think that when we, when we worship and when he was talking about we enter his gates with thanksgiving, when we praise him, when we pray to him, when we study his word, when we get around other believers, then we become more aware mm. of his presence. Yeah. Uh, so he never leaves us. But when we start singing, when we start worshiping, when we start praying, when we quiet down, when we, when we read the scriptures, when we listen, when we are still, and we go, okay, God, your word is true. You really won't ever. I know I don't feel that right now. I know these circumstances don't. And I know this is what's happening in my body. I know that this is the debt. I know that these, I'm overwhelmed with these circumstances I know you'll never leave me. I know you'll never forsake me. Now we can trust in that. Now we have that help. Amen. That's number one. You think we got time for one more? We can Probably get to at least more. number two. Okay, so number two is uh, a benefit is that he will calm you down. Yeah. I like calm down. Said. Yeah, just calm down. I mean, my dad used to say, relax, calm down, which it just made me mad. Right. But thankfully, our Father in Heaven doesn't say it like that. He just says, calm down. I got this. I got you. And I love what uh, Rick shared just at night. It can be a time where, you know, mm. The creepies come out at night. You know, who knows? If fears can be enhanced and just loneliness can be um, heightened, and it's just trusting God. And this is, a, he mentioned, he memorized the scripture. I actually memorized it like 20 years ago, and I, I repeat it every night as I go to bed. Psalm 4, a verse 8 I will lie down in peace and sleep. I believe that's for all of us tonight, but maybe somebody specifically. I'll lay down in peace and sleep, for though I am alone, mm -hmm. Though I am alone, O Lord, you will keep me safe. So again, though I am alone, I'm not lonely because God is with me. That's a, that's a key, man. We can be alone and not lonely. What would be the opposite of calm? So he says calm down. What would be, so why do we need to calm down? What are we, what are we dealing with at that point? Yeah, I suppose maybe storms of life. Yeah. Stresses. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say stresses and anxiety. So you've got a lot of anxiety, maybe even anger, angst, uh, just, just negative energy. And then somebody's like, hey, calm down. Um, boy, that's, that's tough. For a personality like me, uh, the last thing I want to do is calm down. You know, when, so when, when something stirs me up, when something's making me emotional, when something's got me all fired up, and, uh, and I, even if I know I should calm down, that's not what my flesh wants to do. That's not what my mind wants. My emotions, man, I am fired up. Let's go do something now. Let's kick the cat. Let's go storm the mountain. Let's climb and let's do something. But the last thing I want to do is calm down. Okay, I said all that to say, so, so I become a parent. Uh, and, and good parenting, you can't be like that. And uh, so I took lots of classes. I read lots of books. I went to, to lunch and breakfast and dinner with lots of great dads. 
And I'm like, and I cried out to God. I'm like, God, help me with this. And this, this concept of calming down was something I had to really work on. And so on a practical sense, I don't know that I'm not even in scripture right now, but, but if I, if my kids have stirred up that, I'll just say that anxiety, that stress in me, that anger, that frustration, that emotion, whatever that is in my, in my, I had to learn. Uh, and some of you have heard me when I talk about parenting skills, I had to learn a couple things. I had to literally calm down. And one of the things I would do would I would, you know, my toddlers, my two and my three-year-old, my four-year-old is I would just get down on my knees. And if they were this tall, I would try to get down to their level. And sometimes I would, I would get down just as low as I could so that I was looking to, and I wasn't doing it for them. I was doing it for myself because if I want my, everything within me wants to do this and I want to be loud and I want to be taught and I want to tell and I want to big and oh, you know, I want to do some crazy stuff and it helps me to calm down and it helps them because I'm not helping anything you know it, it helped in my marriage it helps in my relationships I've been in counseling sessions in my office before that have gotten a little heated uh, with different people that come in not necessarily necessarily towards me but they're they're pretty excited and I have got a little I've got a little thing on my chair and I, I've done it. I promise you. I promise you I've done it. Maybe I've done it to you. And you're like, oh, I wondered why he did that. And I'm just like, as they get heated, I just lower my chair. And I just get, and so I'm looking up. So I'm like, I'm going to talk to you right now. I'm going to say something pretty strong. I'm going to, I feel like I've got a word for you that's going to help you. But what I want to say, hey, you stupid, dumb, ignorant idiot, as my mom would say, you know, you need to quit treating your wife like that. Don't you dare talk to kids, your children like that. You've got to, man, you've got to, no, I just want to get aggressive. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to calm down. I'm going to help. I'm going to lower my chair. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to slow my voice down. And that's what I do with my kids. I do it with my wife. I try to do it with my friends. If I've got to come in and I, you and I have a tough conversation, I might wait a day before I'm going to go talk to, to Bill. Because I want to calm down. This is a big deal to me. I think, I think a benefit of being in God's presence is he will calm you down. Remember the, on the storm, on the lake, disciples were freaking out. What's, where's Jesus? He's sleeping on a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> He's calm. He's calm. <laughs> He's cool. He's chilling. That's it. That's good. I think we're out of time. We should finish. Yeah, let's finish. Uh, maybe, maybe you want to write down there online. Maybe you want to write down some things or send Bill and I a personal message or something there uh, through uh, Facebook or Instagram, or you can always e email us directly. Let us know what you're thinking, what you're feeling. How are you dealing with the, the presence of God? What kind of struggles you deal with? And maybe some specific things that we could address next week. So next week, we'll go through these. I don't know if we'll go through these as slow as we went through them just now. Because next week, I really want to get into some of relational loneliness yeah, yeah. and some rejection. Boy, it is painful uh, you know, when there's breakup in relationships and whether that's in a marriage, whether that's a friendship, a business partnership, sometimes it's a loss of a loved one in the, the passing away. Sometimes it's moving away. Uh, you know, that, it's pain. And so there is pain and loneliness, you know, not to make light of when people have lost their pets, mm -hmm. their dogs and their cats, it can bring loneliness. And, and all of those things are real. And God has an answer for that. And so let's, let's talk about some of that next week. And uh, those are real pain, real, real pain and struggle that people go through. Yeah, let's keep growing. And then the following Wednesday night, we have our Thanksgiving Eve service coming mm -hmm. up. Can you believe it? Thanksgiving Eve. So uh, that starts at 7 o'clock. So we got a couple of good weeks ahead of us. Sunday, suiting yeah. up. It's going to be good. Yeah. Pastor we'll get, Frank's we'll, been bringing the word. We've been we'll do it. We'll services. get into the, to the next piece of armor that God puts on us and, uh, or tells us to put on our helmet of salvation. That's good. So uh, we'll, we'll have fun with that this Sunday. And uh, like Bill said, so next week we'll talk more about loneliness. That following week is the Thanksgiving. So we won't have this regular. And if you can, join us here in person. We'd love to have you celebrate with us and just pray and give thanks to God and let the body of Christ. If, but we'll be online as well, so you can join us online, be sure. And it's a great time. You know, uh, to be honest, I'm out on vacation with my family every Thanksgiving. We go over to the coast and we hang out at the beach and stuff. And uh, we drive an hour back here just to come and be with the body of Christ. 
Christ and for our family to come. So it's, we're not making extra money. We're not, you know, I, it's just a time for the body of Christ to come together and give thanks. So I, I love our Thanksgiving service. We're going to wear our plaid. Uh, if you want to wear your favorite plaid shirt, uh, whatever. Or no. Mr. Rogers sweater. No, don't wear your Mr. Rogers sweater. Merit, wear your, your plaid. Oh, you can wear whatever you want, but just for fun, if you want to, uh, we'll do that again. So All right. it's good. Good. Everything it was a great else? night. Thanks for joining us online. Appreciate you being here. Have a great week. Come Bye. on. <laughs>